audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. The story. When I got home, I went into the room and I prayed for my wife. The room was in a nasty condition with a, a nasty odor, a smell. And uh, as I prayed for her, the power of God was upon her. And uh, in no time, she kind of was raised off the bed and fell back down to the bed and went into a deep sleep, but her jaws all went back to play. Eyeballs rolled back into the eye socket and a tongue rolled back into her mouth and she was completely healed. G'day, I'm Jimmy Colfax. Welcome to The Story, where today we're featuring some amazing healing stories with Jesse and Cookie Patiachi. Back in 1989, Jesse's wife Cookie nearly died from a brain tumour, and her symptoms came soon after they heard the news of another family tragedy, the death of Jesse's father in South Africa. So all this bad news obviously rocked their worlds, but they remained strong in their faith. We'll find out what happened next in their lives as Jesse and Cookie have a chat with Shelley Scowan. The death of my father, 2nd of August 1989, of brain cancer or brain tumor happened then. And on the 3rd of August 1989, my wife started getting pain. Not really recognizing or realizing that those pains that she had in her head had something to do with brain cancer or brain tumor. Till we found out on the 20th October, she was landed in hospital in Melbourne. And... Um, 31st October, that's when they found this brain tumor, which was a similar type of thing that my dad died of. Yeah, and it was a significantly sized tumor and also the position of it. Can you describe just how serious it was? Yeah, the size of the tumor was at that time 1.5 centimeters in diameter. And from what I understood from the radiologist's point of view and others in medical science, they, they said to me it was a solid type of a brain tumor and it was a donut shaped tumor then um, which means it had trapped brain cells on the center had virtually a hole going through it and around the tumor there was brain cells inflamed because of the expansion of the tumor the ongoing growth of the tumor and uh, of course that was a real shocker to us because there was no hope uh, in that sense. It was just an operation and nothing else. Yeah. And even that was quite a miracle um, with the diagnosis of that because it was kind of out of the blue there, Jesse, that you just had an inexplicable urge to return home early from work. I'm glad you uh, acted on that urge. That's right, yes. I was at work at that time, busy attending to business and uh, this urge on the inside, uh, I just got to go home. Don't know why. My wife was all well that morning, no problem with my son. And uh, when I got home, she was virtually semi-conscious at that point in time, laying and on the lounge and, uh, yeah, couldn't do a thing for herself. And she had your baby there as well, who himself was dehydrated as, as well. David, yeah, he was then dehydrated as well, and I did not know what was, she did not know what was going on, Mm. because he was just uh, so uh, high in temperature that morning, and I left early morning for work, and I got home, I think, about 11 o'clock, just having that edge, and I got two patients to attend to. Yeah, so the baby David ended up being okay, a couple of days in hospital. That's right, they admitted him, he was admitted the same day on the... 20th October in hospital, but uh, they were wanting to give him a lumbar punch on his spine, or lumbar puncher, and uh, I declined on that. I said, uh, I want to pray for David. I want to believe God for a miracle, because the same thing happened to my oldest daughter once, and uh, and, uh, we were just new parents, of course, having the first child. We did not know about this uh, temperature turning to convulsions at, at that time. So she landed in hospital and they gave her a lumbar puncture and uh, I'll never forget the way she cried and screamed as they were doing that. Mm. So I said to them, do not touch David's spine. And I prayed from about 5 o'clock that afternoon. My wife's upstairs in another ward trying to bring air pain down. My son below and uh, he had this high temperature and... Uh, but I prayed right through to midnight, and that's when the Lord had touched him and his body came back to normal. 
Unfortunately, the news wasn't so good for your wife, Cookie. And uh, as you said, it was discovered that she had that brain tumour measuring about one and a half centimetres in diameter. Obviously very painful as well. So they gave you the choice of doing an operation, but uh, the, the choices weren't real great, were they? No. It was not great at all because the... When I spoke to the specialist in the guards and the radiologist, uh, finally they concluded that the chances of death was there. She'll walk into a theater and there's 50% chance of her coming out dead, a corpse, or 50% chance coming out a vegetable. And I said, no, 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 no. I can't accept that. You know, I have to consult with my God. I have to seek my God's face and... And I did, but I went back the next day and uh, uh, Cookie finally, you know, came to talk about it to the doctors then and uh, accepted the fact that she wanted to go for the operation then. The next day when we got there, they got us the best surgeon and we only did that with this uh, on condition they get us the best surgeon and they got us the best surgeon and he gave us the opportunity uh, to go ahead uh, with this operation and... Uh, and everything will be taken care of. And on the day of the operation, right in the hospital, Cookie changed her mind and she said, I'd rather trust the Lord because to me I was focused in trusting the Lord Jesus for a miracle. Uh, but, you know, it, Cookie has to make that decision in the end. And um, on the day of the operation, she withdrew and she said, no, I will trust the Lord because you think of it, the prognosis was quite clear. You go in, you'll come out. The best scenario, a vegetable, or you'll come out a corpse. Mm. So uh, that morning, Cookie made the decision and uh, cancelled the operation on the spot and ever since then trusted the Lord. Yeah, which is amazing. But it was after that that, I mean, the, the following months, the pain just intensified. It all increased and increased and increased. Let's go back a little bit, though, I mean, into why she knew that she could trust the Lord for healing, uh, because you were both raised, uh, born and raised in Hinduism, but it was because you both had seen some significant healings in your family's lives. That is why you turned to Christianity. So you already had that faith in the power of God and his healing. Um, Cookie, can you talk to us a bit about um, how you became a Christian? Well, Shelley, I became a Christian in 1974. My dad was, um, he was in hospital, he was bedridden, and because of complications of diabetes, his organs were all failing and doctors had given up hope on him. And while lying in this hospital bed, one of mum's cousins came to visit my dad and to pay her respects to him before he died. And she was she was a Christian that loved the Lord, and she was concerned that if my dad died, he was going to a lost eternity. And while she was there, she shared to him about the love of Jesus, and she asked my dad if she could pray for him before she left. And my dad said, all right, because we had that all the Hindu rituals that one does. My paternal grandmother even did blood sacrifice, but to no avail. And my mom's cousin prayed for my dad, and, she, and my dad challenged her before she could pray that if your God is God, then all I ask of him is, to make, is for him to make me walk out of this hospital. And she prayed her childlike prayer, and she went away. And two days later, my dad not only walked out of that hospital, but he walked out totally healed. Wow. And that's how we became Christians. Yeah, because you could see that God is real and he's powerful and he does have that power over sickness and death. That's right. Yeah. And he's still doing it today, Shelley, because he is the God of his word. Mm. He's the same yesterday, today and forever. Jesse, you have a similar story. How did you get to know in the very beginning that God is real? Well, my sister was born on the 25th June 1963. And, of course, we lived then in South Africa in the city of Durban. She was born with some infirmities, like she had a leaking heart. One of the valves were malfunctioning. And she adds 
a noisy chest, uh, as if she had a wheezing chest or something wrong within her lungs. They couldn't find, they knew about the leaking heart, they couldn't find out what was causing this noise in her lungs. Till she was about five months old and my sister was suffocating. She'll breathe in, but she struggled to breathe out. Oh, wow. And that's when the doctors found out she had a growth in the windpipe. That's when they said, well, we'll have to give her 21 injections to melt that growth. They didn't want to operate on it. Yeah. They couldn't do much about the heart. They said, well, we can get rid of this growth. And they decided they'll give her 21 injections. They gave her three injections a day for one week, seven days. And um, they said, we'll wait to see the results. By the end of the second week, there was significant results. My sister shrunk in size. Her bones virtually started to melt away. Wow. Her hair had fallen off. She was now gone bald. Arms and legs were all twisted in. They would say you could put her into a shoebox. I remember clearly then, I used to wonder why my sister was gone bald and uh, she's gone small and her head is soft. My dad would tap me on my hands, do not touch your sister, she's sick. Well, we did everything. You can think of, my great-grandfather was a Hindu priest, a Brahmin Hindu priest, as a matter of fact. The temple that he built is still in South Africa, over 100 years old. And um, we grew up in that. We did every prayer you can think of, of no avail. So my mother, when the doctors said we can do nothing any longer to your daughter, uh, there's nothing much that can be done, uh, well, uh, just wish for the best and uh, she's going to die because of the collapsing of her bones. Mm -hmm. My mother cried out and uh, she was trying to save this child's life. She did everything, but of no avail. She lifted up her hands in this room where we had our own shrine in my grandmother's house with all our various deities and gods. And she cried out to Jesus there because she had no answer from the way she believed. So she cried out to Jesus, if you are God, can you help me? Can you heal my child? Now, my mother heard about Christ when she was about 13 or 14 years old. She went to church with the neighbors, and the neighbor, of course, invited her in uh, to the home to go to church. Came back home, my grandmother spanked her. She was not allowed to go to church. And uh, so she never ever went back to church again. Till now, she's 27 years old, and she cries out to the Jesus she remembered at that teenage years. And there was a supernatural intervention there, and uh, my mother said there was breeze blowing through the ceiling, and she couldn't understand what was this all about. But it was so beautiful, and, and a voice spoke out, saying, take your child to a pastor, and he'll pray for your child, and the child will be healed. You're listening to The Story. Today, we're hearing some amazing healing stories with Jesse and Cookie Pariachi, who are chatting with Shelley Scowen. We'll find out what happened next when Jesse's mother took his sister to a pastor to be healed when we return. The Story. If this program has highlighted something you'd like prayer for, we'd love to pray for you. Call 1 800 Pray For Me. That's 1 800 772 936. It's a free call. Or text 0401 132 888. Hi, I'm Jimmy Colfax, and this is The Story. Today, Jesse and Cookie Pariachi are sharing some amazing healing stories with Shelley Scowen. Before the break, we heard how Jesse's mother heard her voice that told her to take her sickly child to a pastor to be prayed for. Next, Jesse will share what happened to his sister, and also we'll hear more of the story of how Cookie was healed from a brain tumour. Cut a long story short, when we got back to our own home, an elderly woman brought the gospel of Jesus Christ home. My mother would say, yeah, no problem, you can pray, but you know, I'm born as a Hindu. I will die as a Hindu, but if your God can help, that's fine. And this lady encouraged and encouraged my mother about Jesus. And uh, finally, it was on the 25th December, the same year, 1963. My sister is now six months old, 
When she was like five months old, they gave her the 21 injections and shrunk her body. Now she's six months and uh, she was frothing out of her mouth on the 24th of December. Now on 25th, she's frothing more and her eyes were gone white. So they were rushing off to the doctors to see whether she's dying or is she dead. And that morning, we were invited into a church in someone's backyard. We heard the gospel of how Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And my mother was dressed like a typical Hindu, uh, you know, with a dot on her head and everything else around the neck. And so was I and my brother and my father with ashes and whatever. But the pastor, you know, he prayed for my sister. Because my mother that day believed. She really believed that Jesus is Lord of that experience she had. She really believed that he can heal mm. her child. Uh, but my dad didn't at that point in time. He said, I want to first see your God healed, then I will consider becoming a Christian. But my mother got born again. Uh, there were a number of things happened, but she gave her heart to the Lord then. And the pastor prayed for her. And uh, something happened, but there was no results of any healing. Till about five or six, when my sister laying on the cot, in the cot or in a bed, as she said, she heard this cry. She cried out and said, who's crying? And my dad said, that must be our childhood. And they ran into the room. Here was my sister, brand new, recreated body, her legs and arms kicking out and crying out aloud. A body grew from that lump of flesh to a normal six-month-old baby perfectly well. So God had his purposes in healing, and it obviously built your faith, uh, knowing that God can and will heal miraculously. So you had this faith uh, as Cookie was sitting there um, in a very bad way with this brain tumor in a lot of pain, but you knew that God could heal if he chose to, and that's where you decided to put your faith rather than in an extremely risky operation that the outcomes, even the best outcomes, weren't very good anyway. So you had then returned to South Africa thinking that uh, it would be a more convenient place. You're close to your family and friends uh, to believe and pray for a miracle, but also logistically to have that support um, for if she did end up passing away from this tumour. But you got a pretty clear word from God. In fact, they don't come a whole lot clearer than this, but a pretty clear word from God that you were to come back to Australia to receive your miracle. Can you tell us the story of that church service you were sitting in? Well, yeah, I went to church at first Sunday of uh, January uh, 1991. And um, the pastor comes up. He comes up and uh, points his finger at me. He said there were two men here that God wanted to speak to, and and one of them was a friend of mine, and he gave him a word which was accurate. Then he looked for the second person, and he looked at me, and he said, The Lord would say unto you, forget your plans and arrangements you're making to stay in South Africa. You must return to Australia, for your blessing awaits you there. And then, of course, uh, I kind of rejected that word the first time. And then second time, the Lord spoke to him again. And then the third time the very strong word of the Lord that I should return to Australia for my blessing awaits me here. Hmm. Of course, uh, we pack our bags and return to Australia. And my wife is actually in in a very painful state as well. And she was uh, not in the best condition. She didn't want to uh, come back to Australia simply because the reason we went back was In the event of death, as you said, we'll have immediate moral support because all our biological families are there. She knew that she was dying. So we come back here and I got straight into trusting God as I always did. And and on the 25th of September 1991, uh, she was really sick then. To get a doctor's and uh, they said we can rush an emergency operation tomorrow, the 26th September. Uh, but he called me aside and he said, take her home for now. I don't think so she's going to last too long because that tumor could well be in around three centimeters in diameter. And he said, you trusted in your God all these days. And of course, uh, because they all knew that I was going to trust in the Lord, but nothing has eventuated. I said, well, I'm still trusting in God. When I got home, I went into the room and I prayed for my wife. The room was in a nasty condition with a, a nasty odor. A smell, and uh, 
as I prayed for her, the power of God was upon her, and uh, in no time she kind of was raised off the bed and fell back down to the bed and went into a deep sleep, but her jaws all went back to place, eyeballs rolled back into the eye socket, and a tongue rolled back into her mouth, and she was completely healed. Mm -hmm. But the smell also disappeared. In the meantime, I had an appointment with the doctor the next morning, with the radiologist, and with the surgeon. Uh, went to the radiologist, had new scans done, went, of course, the next day to the surgeon, because Cookie is perfectly well, mm. didn't have any operation, because the scans came out, brand new brain cells, normal. Wow. Scans. And you knew from the moment, well, she knew from the moment that she woke up the next morning that she was completely healed. I mean, she was able to do things that she hadn't been able to do for months and months. So then when you went back for that scan that you already had the appointment for, um, yeah, you managed to amaze a few doctors. Yes. As a matter of fact, the radiologist, the chief radiologist, the director of radiology, he said to me, Go and thank your God for what he has done. Go and thank your Lord Jesus. He said, for me, she died two years ago, but today she's alive and well because of your God. They said, oh, we can't believe this. We're going to investigate this whole thing. Well, they took a month, and they did a brain pattern scan, uh, the brain pattern check, a bone pattern check, and um, they come out with, uh, we're talking about the same person, uh, it's their scans because they measured the 1989 with 91. They just couldn't believe this. They said this cannot be right. But they concluded that God had healed her. Just an incredible story. And uh, it's great that you were able to bring that glory to God. And it was irrefutable, the evidence right in front of these people of the amazing healing that God had brought forth uh, literally in just a moment as you rebuked that spirit of death that was there uh, on Cookie. Cookie, what's life like for you now? I guess you, you feel like you've got that second lease on life? The Lord has been really gracious to me. Shelley, I have been in good health ever since. And we went on and we had another child who's 23 years old now. And the Lord has given us the strength to go and preach the gospel wheresoever he leads us. Can you see reasons why God allowed you to go through all of this? Well, like the word of God tells us that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. From where we were in the Lord to, to now, God has turned the situation that the devil has taken and he's turned it for the good that um, we are able to share of the goodness of what God has done in our lives. We have been through it. We have walked through the valley of the shadow of death. Mm. And whosoever we minister to, we are able to share from our experience how we have come out of it and God can do it for them as well. Yeah, I think it's important to know that sometimes in the sovereign will of God, it isn't to actually bring that healing to people. There are many, many godly, godly people yeah. who have passed away in these kind of tragic circumstances. And it's things that we as humans look at and go, why? Why could that happen? I think it is important to mention that God is God. He is the sovereign one. Yeah. Some people he heals and some people he takes home to be with him. In our case, uh, ever since the Lord had healed Cookie, you know, the Lord... Of course, it's taken me out of business and uh, in the sense that I no more am doing what I used to do like I used to be. And we've traveled a lot within this country and a number of Aboriginal communities, taken the gospel into a number of places and seen a number of them come to the Lordship of Christ. Wow. Right through up North Queensland, into the Torres Strait and uh, outside the country. I decided to go public here in Brisbane and share to the community that this is what Jesus has done. Yeah, and I think that's one reason why God does give us healings is so that we can testify and bring that glory to Him through that testimony, which is exactly what you've been doing this morning as well. So um, thank you for telling us your story. I mean, there's been multiple stories today of the way that God has worked miraculously in both of your lives. Thanks for giving us an insight into that faith that you had and uh, the way that God has brought favor into your life. Yeah, no. Thank you, Shelley. Thank you for having us. And to all the uh, listeners out there, may they be blessed as well. 
That was Jesse and Cookie Patiachi sharing multiple stories of miraculous healings. A verse in the Bible that played a big role in their lives was Acts chapter 10, verse 38, which says, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. Well, if you're listening today and need someone to pray with for healing in your life, our prayer line is 1-800-PRAY-FOR-ME. That's one 800 And we'd love to pray for you on that number, one 800 736 Well, thanks for joining us for Jesse and Cookie's Amazing Stories of Healing. Until next time, I'm Jimmy Colfax, encouraging you to share your story with someone today. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.